Welcome to this week's edition of Trade the Trend, a weekly video discussing where the stock market is going. This video is going to focus on the S&P 500. I'm going to cover the ASX 200, gold and uranium in a separate video. I'll leave a link for that in the description section below. I'm also going to show you the part of the market which makes me the most worried. So make sure you stick around for that. As always, this is general commentary. It doesn't take your personal situation into account. With all of that said, let's get into our first chart. So starting off with the S&P 500, and there's actually not a whole lot to report this week. It's been a fairly quiet week, not a great deal of price movement at all. Uh, we've really seen the S&P 500 testing the, um, the upper end of this, this trading range. You can see these blue parallel lines, this downward sloping trend channel, which is a, which is a type of a trading range. And we've been testing the, the, the upper, upper boundary of that for the last, last couple of weeks. And another thing to note is a, another resistance point at around 4,200, which we're right up nudging beneath just at the moment. So this is an interesting area, this 4,200. You can see it's been uh, technically active from, from June. You can even go further back. But just for the, for the sake of this, I just want to focus on, on the most recent touch points this 4,200 area has had. And we're right back beneath it now. So I think with the, the loss of momentum just over the last couple of weeks and the proximity to, to like a double layer of resistance, I think that just increases the odds that we're going to get some sort of a pullback. Some sort of pullback might develop over the next next week, maybe the next next couple of weeks. It just doesn't seem to me an asymmetric point to be adding to positions in the uh, the S and P five hundred at the at the current time. I think this four thousand two hundred level. I think it's a I think it's a big level. I think it's an important level. And for the market to and this is if of course if the market is to to get through it, I think it might need to do a little bit more work. Could be a case of some more back and forth, build up some energy, and then potentially it, the market then has a go at, at punching through the um, resistance. Whether that even happens, we don't know. But it just doesn't seem at the moment to have the energy to, to break through this 4,200. Um, if a pullback does happen, I think the first thing we want to do is just keep an eye on the Fibonacci retracement. So just let's use the, the March low and, and this week's high. And if we were to get a Fibonacci type type retracement, it brings us back to around where these, these rising moving averages are. That's the upper end of the Fibonacci's. We potentially come back to around these rising moving averages, which could potentially be quite, quite constructive. But we need to see, we need to see how that price action plays out. Of course, different scenarios could come into play. But at the moment, it's watching this price action, seeing how it develops, working out where's asymmetric for entries and, and where's not. Now, I want to show you um, uh, an area of, I think, look, I think an area of uncertainty in this current market is when we look at the, um, the S&P 500 on an equal weighted basis. So this is basically the S&P 500 on an equal weighted basis. It's right in the middle of its, um, of its trading range. And that really doesn't give us a great deal of direction whatsoever. What, what I want to do with this, it's um, I want to add, this is interest, an interesting comparison to make. I'm going to, with this, I'm going to overlay a chart of the, the S&P 500, the, um, the, the capitalization weighted S&P 500, and show you what, what I see when I look at this. So let's just line these up. So normally you'd see these, these two markets be moving, they move pretty much Pretty much not quite in lockstep, but there's a very high correlation. What we have at the moment, we have a situation where the equal weighted is, is nowhere near its um, February high, whereas when you look at the, uh, at the, the capitalization weighted, it's actually not too far. It's not far from breaking above this February high, particularly when you put it on a high-low close basis rather than just uh, closing line-based graph, which I'm using. So it's potentially setting up divergence, and it's really like graphically you can see that the uh, that the, all the action seems to be in the big cap stocks, and and that's something that worries me. It's the the big stocks doing most of the work. So 
I think we we can't ignore we can't ignore the um, the uh, the underlying trend in the S and P five hundred. But look, I think it's something to be aware of that it's those um, those it's really currently at the moment being driven by those those larger larger stocks. I want to really want to see broad based participation to get some confidence that this market does have the potential to really do some some uh, good trending on the upside. Now, if you're getting some value from this, please hit that like button. Please leave a short comment. Just, hey, thanks. The video tells YouTube you're watching. YouTube shows other people, and that helps me heaps. And uh, hit the subscribe button if you haven't already to so get notifications when I do these videos. And of course, visit me over at motiontrader.com.au. Now, let me show you something else. And this is the Russell, the Russell 2000. So this is similar to what we were saying in the, um, the S&P 500 equal weighted in that the, 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 the smaller stocks, the smaller to mid cap stocks, they're just not participating at the moment. So the Russell is just sitting here below the, um, the 50 and the, the 100 day moving averages. Been sitting below there for, for several weeks and it worries me when a market sits below declining moving averages. That's always a point of vulnerability. All the bad stuff, all the bad stuff tends to happen when a market is below moving averages. That's not necessary to say the market has to decline. The market, of course, at some point bases below moving averages and turns higher. Maybe what this is, maybe this is a big basing formation. But nonetheless, we do need to be aware that this is a point of vulnerability. At the moment, it actually looks like uh, it's looking like some sort of a, a little flagging formation where we've had um, had a line in the market and now we've got a sideways sideways consolidation it does open the risk that the market breaks to the, the downside from from that pattern that's out of sync with what we're seeing in the s p 500 so it's it, it just adds to the uncertainty of this this market and that of course this breakdown may of course not happen this this could continue to turn higher and then that it starts to starts to give us some more more confidence that the market maybe it can continue to run. But at the moment, it's um, as I say, it's out of sync with the S and P five hundred and also the the, the Nasdaq one hundred. Um, sort of price action I would have liked to have seen from that March low would have been more like like a like a like a stronger stronger sort of sort of rally. And then we get a flagging formation from a higher level. Then from there, it sets the stage for a, for a push higher. But of course, that's not what we have. We didn't get that type of price action. And it's a case of we've got to play the price action that we have, not the price action that we want. So keep a close eye on this, I think, at the moment. And um, just, just finishing up, this, this gives us a similar sort of picture, but on a, on a small stock level again. It's the, um, the iShares Microcap ETF. Again, we've got a situation where we've got a market which is just sitting on the sitting on its lows below moving averages. It's it's close to making new lows. These small caps, small caps shouldn't be so out of step with the big charts. So for me, this just doesn't pre present a, a clear picture. So I think it's um, this is just not a time for for big bets in either direction. Uh, I'm conservatively long. I remain conservatively long whilst the, the price action is supportive of that. Uh, but whilst we've got this disconnect, I'll keep plenty of cash on the sideline. Now, I just want to finish up with a, with a really interesting chart so that I saw each week. It's going to add more confusion to the picture. Now, this is from a survey from JP Morgan Strategic Research, turned up in my Twitter feed during the week. The question asked, where do you see the S&P 500 at year end? At the end of the year, where do you think it's going to be? Look at the responses. Below three and a half thousand, three and a half thousand, four thousand, four thousand two hundred and fifty. So the market at the moment is just testing uh, four thousand two hundred. Only five percent of people, let's say five and a half percent of people, see it above current levels, which I think is just absolutely extraordinary. So I don't know the sample size, I don't know who they've asked, but that is a, a massive proportion of people expecting the market to be lower. So the contrarian side of me says. Look, I, I, I want to be cautious on the long side, but um, look, I'd be worried about being an outright bear as well with so many people on that side of the boat, according to this survey. So look, let's, um, 
let's call that a wrap for for this week thank you for joining me hopefully you found it interesting and i look forward to coming back talking to you next week until then bye for now